Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, what? kids. What? Yeah, we it's got a cold. hero on the show. It's we got cold. a hero on the show. It's cold. We got uh, Tim Mr. Kennedy on the show today, mm. ladies and gentlemen. Top of this cold morning. Yeah, he's already beaten up Giorgio this morning. Just and he to... also beat me up. He hurt my hand. I already had a hair hand. <laughs> what was your hand <laughs> hurt from? Hand from a sword fight. <laughs> Jared, no, Jared it wasn't was dressed up in medieval you times You hurt yourself here a on the ago. cross guard. Yeah. That's, that's a real sword injury. That's legitimate. Yeah. Where See, were your gauntlets? I. That's good advice. So, Ross and Tim, this is something for here, both of you way. right now, real uh-huh. quick. I had an idea the other day. Yeah. I really want to shoot a video. You're in it. Shirtless. We need one other person shirtless. Probably you. I like you guys are wrestling on my bed while okay. I'm talking so about far, this Genesis. Like gay porn. No, yeah. I'm in a tuxedo yeah. and I'm just talking about how Genesis didn't really break out until their third album, where yeah. Phil Collins. Genesis, always... the music, not the yes. book, yes. the Bible. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Fair we're recreating a scene there. from American Psycho. Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. But what it's I was two thinking. guys wrestling on the bed. He's covered while in an oil. I'm... No, 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 no. I'm in a tuxedo. No, no. But when when <laughs> the he was dudes were covered in oil. Yeah, remember he was like kind of glistening. No, shiny? there was there were no dudes in the actual scene. Right, but right, in right, my right. Scene, and you your guys scene. are definitely yes. covered in oil. I want to remind the audience too in range fifteen that Jared also came up with. You wrote in Tim Kennedy shirtless. I wrote no, in Tim naked. Kennedy naked, naked. naked. Yes. and then they yeah. said no, and then a, a malfunction happened with his costume yeah. that wasn't. Sabotage. Look, we are, we are, I've, I've, I've really wanted to talk about this, though. We, so, all, we all learned a lot from uh, Timberlake and Janet Jackson. Okay? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That was a good learning experience for everybody, I think. You can get away with it pretty much. You just got to say oops. Oops. Yeah, but what? like, I was on the receiving end of this malfunction, and where that. they planned it to happen, <laughs> I had... Yeah, can we say dick on yeah. the show? Oh, you can I say whatever so. you want. You can say yeah. a lot. Okay. Of we shit. say the say worst shit on the planet. You can talk okay. about we anything. Even though you know it's combat dick, combat dick. You yeah, like where you're working out, you're getting cold water, yeah. and then yeah. like things go, whoosh, the yeah. shrinkage happens. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, combat it was dick. Cold that day. Is, and I was in Mortal Kombat with Randy Couture. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was scary. so. Th- these are not things that are conducive to long, strong. Want to get the friction on. This is more like where would you go? No, your your body retracts your junk when it's time to fight. And then, unless you get a murder boner, what was my um. Leopard print it was, material. It was a loincloth. Loin it was cloth. a piece of wolf fur. Yeah. That just what it started as. Disintegrated immediately as soon as you started fighting. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what re- weirdly disintegrates wolf fur is gasket remover. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're not saying JT set it up, but JT might have set it That's up. That's basically yeah. stream. This is basically. And it came true. This is basically If I Did It by O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Right <laughs> That's what we're fucking watching. Do you remember right that now? adorable? Um, she had like black hair, really dark eyes. Um, did the makeup and kind of dealt with a lot of the w- wardrobe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The so makeup. They uh, were trying to pin some of the fur yeah. back onto what was left of your leotard. Yeah, my, yeah. my loin cover. Bottoms. Uh, they were more like European swim bottoms. So she was trying to like pin it on there, but she's like, "Okay, this is this is going to be dangerous." I was like, "It's not because there's really nothing there right now." You know, because there there wasn't enough flesh to, for her to have to worry about. At, well, then, at all, yeah, yeah, you were good to go. What I didn't tell you about that, by the way, is after you left, mm-hmm. um, that mat had so much blood on it. They made us pay for it. Oh, but uh, you, don't you remember what happened when they tried to take it back? Oh my God! And they went, "What?" <laughs> they uh, they asked if we had slaughtered five pigs on there, and they didn't want any of their people to touch the mat. And they were like, "We're billing you for this." Uh, that was a twelve thousand dollar mat. Maybe <laughs> never been more proud <laughs> yeah. than right yeah, now. But just the fear in them, like you, we rented a ring and we bring it back. Covered in blood. What, what did they you, think was going to happen? It's, it's a, a fucking ring. ring, dude. What do you do in a ring? You fucking punch each other. Well, in the here, face. here's the thing. In, in all and fairness, we bleed. pitched them of like, hey, there's two huge UFC fighters that are going to be on it, and they were honored. They were like Tim Kennedy and Randy Couture. It doesn't get any better than doesn't. that. Doesn't. And now, what we neglected to tell them <laughs> was that you were getting your ch- your head uh, ripped off of yeah. of Randy Couture, and there was going to be blood everywhere else. Yeah. They never would have gave us the ring. Yeah, but think about it. They still to this day think that there was some secret private fight between Tim and Randy Couture yeah. that resulted in that much blood. Yeah. <laughs> like they probably tell this story, Tim. The Maybe only- it was Bohemian Grove. <laughs> 
<laughs> the only photo that like, generated besides what was in the movie itself was Randy and I covered in each other's blood sitting on the back of a trunk. Yeah. And everybody just wants to know what, what happened here that yeah. you guys are mostly naked covered in each other's blood. It's, this does not this does not compute. Yeah. It's no, not, it's it not your business. Compute. It's and also not your goddamn business. So. Somebody stole the, the head you ripped off of Randy Couture and tried to sell it online. Same That's with a Travis. Dick. Someone stole the dick. And, and $7, the dick, uh, for uh, Evan's dick. dick. And then Nick Palmashano hunted them down. And found this company and then demanded to know where it came from. Where's my and, dick, uh, bro? Hey. I will say this. Nick got the dick back and he got the head back of Randy Couture. So that is somewhere in a vault. We're going to put I've, it in I have glass. never seen it since. Yeah. What's hilarious, you couldn't tell a story that more aptly describes Nick Palmashon. <laughs> <laughs> he hunted you know? them down. Just he got the on dick back. principle. I'm taking the next three months off. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to find I'm whoever find stole this, this thing that has no real value. My <laughs> I'm going to spend a ton of my time out of propriety decency and and moral this is my life now yeah. i'm gonna find this dick in this head uh it was, it was the best man i look i know you get hit up all the time about range 15 so do i um you were fantastic in it and that's where we all met um and then as all of our lives have grown the show has grown black rifle coffee has grown ranger up has grown all that stuff it's great to reconnect here while we're all in austin because yeah. we just moved the entire media company we're here. We saw you on Joe Rogan the other day, which is what I really want to bring up because you got on there and probably made a comment that seemed flippant to you where you just said, you know what would be awesome? Is if you hosted a debate with Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and I think that would be amazing. And then that light the internet. Well, so we were, we were watching as it, as it happened, right? Didn't think anything of it. About four hours later, it exploded into the ether to the point that after the first debate, Everybody on Twitter, number one, was like, well, Joe Rogan definitely should have hosted that. Yeah. Did you know what you were doing going into that show, or was that just a complete accident of like, holy shit, I can't believe this got around the world? So about the debate, um, I, I knew I was going to ask Joe if he would host it. Um, I have a lot of respect for Joe. I also know that he has enough common sense to mute somebody if they won't shut up when he tells them to. Um, and evidently, somebody doesn't know how to do that on debate. So... I prepared heavily for that conversation because we were talking about a bunch of really nuanced subjects to include insurgency, counterinsurgency, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, um, funding of, of insurgencies. Mm. So I, I came in very, very prepared, and I was overly prepared because every time I would state something, Joe never— I, I had so much facts. Mm -hmm. Like if Joe would have been like, okay, well, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm like, well, fantastic, because I have 27 historical <laughs> examples that I can list for you in chronological order. Let's talk about fundamental insurgencies. And here's the example where that happened yeah. in three different countries. Isn't it interesting how everything that's going on in our country right now resembles all the counterinsurgency we've been doing for the last two decades? Yeah, yes. But by interesting, you mean like uh, pathetic? Yeah. 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 Like it's, we should, we should have day. learned these lessons yeah. already. We should, we should have seen we, it coming. We've been on the other side of this. Yeah. yeah. All you have to, times. Like the, it's really, but we see it, but it's, nobody else does. No, it's, yeah. and it's really as simple as cutting off the the money supply. After that, shit just starts to fizzle out. I mean, yeah. yeah. But, but we, we, there's because you've seen nobody it. will admit that there's even a yeah. god. Did you problem. know that it was going to go around the world like that when you when you said it? Um, well, I mean, when Trump retweeted me, and then Donald Trump Jr. hits me up and is like, "Hey, uh, can you make this happen?" I was like, "Well, I mean, your dad said you're in, and like you're asking me, so that seems pretty sure." Mm -hmm. But. Uh, I don't got a phone number for Joe Biden, and I'm not sure if he can. can, can get I'm not sure if he can, 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 can. You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> no, if we get that guy's phone. Number. Some of the guys here. Like, he's sure he's probably <laughs> still in the goddamn white pages. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> might be. This is that. That was that easy, Biden. <laughs> Joe. Oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah, you definitely have yeah. to use a rotary phone to call that old bitch. Hi, is uh, Mr. Biden there? <laughs> um, you no. ain't black. <laughs> That's all he says whenever you, whenever anybody answers. Have no. you seen that uh, Key and Peele sketch? Yes. Where he's making a phone call. Have you seen it yet? No. Like, it's like a robocall from Biden. Yeah. And it just, uh, he's, like, asking him questions, and it's key, the tall guy, right? Yeah. And he's just like, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And he said, oh, I don't know about that. He goes, you ain't black, and just hangs up on him. And he keeps, <laughs> he's calling him back and saying, you ain't black, and hanging up on him over and over again. It's one of the best things I've ever seen in my fucking life. That would be Joe Biden in this. Um, oh, yeah. And he actually <laughs> sure. said no, by the way. Oh, of course he did. So, oh. so he said he would not, he wouldn't participate, but then again, he hasn't left the basement. Uh, which will lead us into where do you think this election is going on Tuesday? Do you think Trump's going to win? I mean, it, it doesn't matter um, <laughs> because Trump wins. We're like nearly in a civil war in every single urban city in the nation. Um, Biden wins. We're going to have a catastrophic economy with um, like taxes that I can't afford. So where do you move? Because I'm already in Texas. We've been looking. Uh, 
Like, wh- where do you go to? Because yeah, we're at, like, the uh, lowest Texas, Texas yeah, place we yeah, can yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been looking into uh, o- overseas. Because four south, years ago, I remember, like, Central America. 2,000 people. <laughs> like, were, were I'd, rather, I'd rather give, you know, a healthy 25% to a local South American government yeah. to leave, say, hey, you guys protect me. I'll fund the police department. Or a warlord. Like, either <laughs> way. Yeah. 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 And, and just way. say, hey, you're a, I'm on your side. Uh, then give it to a Biden tax yeah. economy. Like yeah. you know the Barbra Streisands and um, who's that kind of fat white comedian female? She's uh, not Chelsea funny. Handler. Also, yeah, she was. She's <laughs> another one. Um, <laughs> she's on my. Oh, Amy she's on my list. Amy yeah. Schumer. Yeah. Amy Schumer. Yeah, all yeah. of them. Well, to include Handler, they were yeah. like, "Oh man, I'm gonna leave as soon as I'm he gets elected." Leaving. And then he gets elected. They're like, "Oh, never mind. Taxes are going down, and I'm super selfish and, and greedy, I'm and I'm a hypocrite. No, so I'm just gonna I stay here." Love. Chelsea Handler this week, who called, tell. you know, she, oh, talked, shit about she, called, cent. she called, she called a guy that was, grew up in gangs and got shot quite a few times to remind him that he was black. Yeah. Like huh. Chelsea Handler, cents. a middle-aged upper class white bitch, mm-hmm. yeah. called a guy that's been shot over being in a gang to remind him that he was black. And then she said she would pay his taxes <laughs> if he voted for Biden and took back his vote for Trump. So what happened was 50 Cent looked at the, the tax rates for the state of New York with the, the proposed uh, hike from Biden. And, she, and, she, and he goes, well, I'm not paying that. I'm voting Trump. Yeah. And then afterwards, the Internet exploded. And she goes, I'll pay your taxes. Just go on publicly and say you're voting for Biden. And Isn't just that remember that bribery? you're black. Yeah, you can't yeah. do that. That's yeah. illegal. No, no. I'm going to pay you for your vote? That is a federal crime. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? I would love to I see I know her. what to do. You arrest them yeah. or let yeah. me go skin kick, them. Kick I would wear her skin to a birthday suit. Oh, yeah, yeah she's got good skin. She's upper class. Upper class. I mean, yeah. she's upper class. I mean, she's upper yeah. class. I might complain, complain a lot, but I mean, it's all right. But it's just skin. Skin doesn't talk. If I wore her skin. You might start complaining. Yeah, you would. That's how that works. You're talking about, like, what's the... The guy got a fucking hand transplant that started going crazy or some shit. Remember that? Idle hands? Oh, oh yeah. Hands. Idle yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah. You're going back to Devin Sawa yeah. movies Devin on Sawa. This. Is that who yeah. you Fiction got thing or is that real? With? Fiction thing. I did get in a fist fight with Devin Sawa at a bar. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Bert Kreischer talked about it on his show. Yeah. Um, he was with me. Yep. It was just me and Bert. That was a fun night. And when you I go just, on a show, you just fuck we're gonna, up Devin Sawa. We're, we've agreed to recreate it with everybody Devin, on the show. I heard Devin wants to apologize, though. Really? Yeah. I've heard he's sorry for that night. He, I have no idea. He's acting like a he dick. should be. I have yeah. no idea. Speaking he should of which, be. Just know it's going for him. Have you ever gotten in a bar fight? I always wonder if somebody like you gets into a bar fight, like what happens? Like on accident. If they don't know him, they grab your wife's ass and yep. it's just like, yep. hey man, what do you do? So I don't get in fights because I get paid hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars to fight. I figured. Yeah. Um, a couple examples. I was downtown 6th Street and I very rarely are even in a position to get into a fight. That is true. Like, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't drink. I don't go out to places where people are drinking about to want to fight. Um, but I was there for a birthday party, and um, it would, would have been pretty rude to have said no. So I was there, and this guy was like, oh, you're a baby killer. I know who you are, you violent piece of shit. And he pours a drink on top of my head. And wow. within a few minutes. It's a bold move. It was a bold yeah. move. Bold move, Cotton. Um, I, I played mind games. I went full psych op. Yeah, you know, what, what yeah. was his? Now, can you break Let's down his description? This. How? Yeah. What was his weight, height? Uh, was he out of the London? You know, like, he, was, was it? he was super drunk, and okay. um, he was my height. And uh, I'm going to give him a little nod because he was like 165 pounds. Whoa. Uh, so I'm a 220 pound. Your height. Alpha male. Uh, a gorilla, ogre, <laughs> troll, <laughs> idiot. That has survived five full rounds with professional fighters. Yes. Yeah. Just them. Really giving yeah, you I've been murdering needs. people most yeah. of my adult, yeah. uh, adult life. Yeah, you know. And um, within five minutes, he was telling me the sob stories of him losing his father last year. And oh, God. wanting to enlist but couldn't. Um, Asthma. Flat Asthma. feet. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, color, it was colorblind. Well, yeah, oh. And, um, <laughs> colorblind. Is that a real thing? you from uh, being evidently. a pilot. Yeah. yeah, you can be colorblind in the infantry, I bet. Yeah. I don't know. And here's the here's the other thing. What's, like, the, worst, what's the worst thing that so happens? How, what you was, shoot what a fucking tracer around? Yeah, well, well, how did you flip the switch? What was it? What did you say to him? He the, was like, hey, dude, I don't give a fuck if your dad died, okay? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> we all got dads, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was playing Psychops. I don't know. No, I, I think when you come from a, a position of kind of humility and grace, yeah. so obviously somebody pours a drink in your head, and you're like, ah! They're like, you're going to fight. Super easy. And somebody pours a drink on your head, and you're like, man, I deserve it. I'm ashamed of what I've done, and you know, if I could go back in time and do anything, 
I would go back and change all of the things that I've done. But um, no fucking can way. You I said buy, this? Yeah. <laughs> can I buy you another drink to pour on my head? <laughs> This is, can I buy you another drink to pour on my Guess head? Guess what? I bought him another drink and we drank together. <laughs> Not no a problem. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. What is, and, and so what happens and after then, that? Then, like, he gets, yeah. then he gets him to give him his wallet. Yeah. <laughs> and by the end of the night, Tim yeah. has a fucking general power of attorney yeah. signed by this guy. You take his card. You, <laughs> you take over. Yeah. I still have a kidney for sale, by the way. So <laughs> if anybody needs a kidney, <laughs> it's uh, it's up for auction. Uh, don't every, be a dishbag. Everybody bag. always asks, like, uh, on this show, like, you're one of the, the fan favorites on this show, obviously, and, like, um, there isn't a better human in this world where it's like somebody asked me at the I took my kid to jujitsu. He's six years old. Mm, and they asked right. me and they were like, oh, what would you like your kid to, to be like? And I was like, Do you know, Tim Kennedy. And I was like, oh, yeah. And they sell Jocko's book for kids. Yeah. And they make that uh, mandatory reading at this, this dojo. I like this school. I know. It's a great school. It's great. And so <sighs> I go, Tim Kennedy. And, and he goes, why? And I go, well, he can murder everybody. He's a UFC fighter. He's a smart businessman. And I was like, every time I look at your Instagram to start off the day, I feel horrifically lazy about my life, like awful about yeah. it. Um, is it real? Is all the shit you do real every single day? Well, so I was, I was in Seventh Special Forces Group for a long time, mm -hmm. and during my time there, I was able to smuggle back cocaine, like pounds of cocaine from Medellin, mm -hmm. and I put it into a heavy bag, a boxing bag, and I just stuffed the whole boxing bag with cocaine. So while all of the things I do are real, it's really enhanced by the, the cocaine I, I I'm <laughs> I'm locked in oh, hi ma'am how are you hey, welcome attention oh, how are you hey I'm Vern hey, welcome to the hey. show Thank grab you. grab a microphone I got a seat I for did. you well, welcome to drinking bros uh, I this, do. Is, this is Anthony Come Anthony on. Holloway hi. Hey, this is uh, Tim Kennedy hey. greetings Jared greetings. Taylor and I'm hey. Ross Patterson hi. tell us about yourself so, my name is Danielle Willis. I go by Burn. Uh, like most fighter pilots, I got a call sign. And uh, I'm the 93rd Air Ground Operations Wing Commander. So it's badass. She's in yeah. charge of like all the TACP units. Girls can fly. All the TACP units. So, so yeah, oddly enough, girls can fly. Usually Fantastic. better than the dudes can. For so. sure, no doubt. Yeah. Not in Saudi Arabia, but here for sure. <laughs> Saying. I, I didn't make the fucking rules. I'm just saying. Yeah. Shit. How long have you been in for? That's poorly timed. Uh, so I've been in the Air Force for 24 years. What? Holy yeah. shit. You don't even look 24 years old. I know. Um, you're so sweet. I, I like that. Yeah, I like ranking. that. That's good. Yeah. You, you Teach my husband that. how to say that. Okay. Okay. But, 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 <laughs> ask her the platforms that she's flown because oh, they're very yeah. impressive. Okay. What have you flown? So I started out as the backseater in a Strike Eagle, so F 15 E's. Shut um, up. Yeah. Flew my uh, oh, my first that. combat missions in Operation Southern Watch in your hot tub time machine, go back to that uh, era. And then was in the opening days of Operation Enduring Freedom, dropping bombs in Afghanistan. And then I went to pilot but You already train. said you're married, so I if did. all I, four of us start hitting on you, it'd be, yeah. it'd be poor Along time. Along with the 10.3 million that listen. Just keep talking about this, so, yeah. this so, bombing stuff here. Yeah, so not only am Dude, I married, my, my husband's my also a Viper guy. Um, a fighter pilot. Fighter pilot, married yeah. to a fighter pilot. We're going to we celebrate 20 years of marriage in about two weeks. Congratulations. Yeah. So Look if you at start, that. If you start yeah. heading on her, you're going to see planes circling yeah. over your fucking yeah. house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, don't you worry about a, that. A GB yeah. 54, yeah. If you see You'll a green, never hear coming for your roof. No, yeah. if you not see at a green all. Laser yeah, no. on the ground, That's amazing. Is your husband down. great looking? Because all fighter pilots seem to be great looking for so some reason. He's pretty great looking. Yeah. <laughs> How much volleyball does he play? No, that's Navy. They don't do that. They don't do that here. God. I didn't know. So he's yeah. uh, he's also uh, smart enough to have retired, and he gets to fly A-29s as a contractor now. So oh, yeah, that's amazing. I love uh, yeah. A-20. Okay, an A-29 is imagine merging a P-51 with an F-18 Hornet. It's a two-seater vertical, like, and holds bombs and rockets. Honestly, we should have bought a shit ton of them in the yeah. beginning of the war because, for about the cost of two F-16s to fly for one. Tour, you could have had A twenty nines for everybody in theater. I thought we were just going. <laughs> I thought we were going all thirty five. So, not... <laughs> so how long do you think you're going to stay? Uh, I'm going to stay till I stop having fun. No, no but, shit. So, but what are you doing in Texas right now? So I'm here for Lightning Challenge, which is the worldwide tac P competition for the U.S. Yeah. Air Force. What's it, what's that? Like? It's like a best ranger competition, but tack for the oh, okay. but better. Yeah, for what do you know about tac P's, weirdo? I mean, I was one for fifteen years. Are, someone that argue enough? that that. Jared might be the most famous tack P, except for David Goggins. That doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say right now. Uh, so, so for 24 I'm years, not address yeah. that. 
Like, really no desire to get out. I mean, that's a long time it, going through that grind. It's a long time, right? But I, I got to fly uh, Strike Eagles. I got to fly F-16s in Korea and in combat. And God damn it. That's awesome. Yeah, you live the best life. Holy shit, exactly. I wouldn't leave either. And I and bet your knees don't feel like mine. No, probably not. No. But, but All then, the murdering and none of the injuries. God damn yeah, it. How do we this? Yeah. this yeah. All I had to you be was to smart and pretty. You have to fly an F-16 from the States to theater and refuel like eight times. Like, do you, Can you imagine after the no. air refuel eight no. times? I did F-16? a vir- virtual reality refueling of a F-15, and I did it 26 times. And still didn't get the nozzle. No, I, ne- I crashed all 26 <laughs> times. <laughs> See? Now imagine having to do that to stay alive. So it takes a little bit of a soft touch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Oh, I have that. <laughs> Yeah, look at those gorilla mitts. You definitely yeah. got a soft Somebody touch. else hold the mic. I watched you Whatever trying to, the opposite I watched you trying to type is, earlier. It's yeah. Tim Kennedy. So, so her being the AGAL commander who's in charge of essentially all the stateside TACP units, um, what's the future for TACPs? Since we do kind of fear technology is going to take our job away. Yeah, well, but here's the thing is it's adapt or die, right? So we're in the middle of a... I like that shirt Yeah, I'm going to trademark that. No, just kidding. Um... <laughs> No, we're in the middle of an absolutely wonderful time to be in the Tactical Air Control Party weapon system. And that's the thing. About two years ago, the Air Force designated them as a human weapon system. So really acknowledging what they bring to the fight. And, and you know this because you've been in combat with them. I've been in the TACP community in and out for the last 10 years. Absolutely fell in love with, with the mission from coming from the air side and then just seeing how professional we can be um, in terms of getting close air support into theater, getting in with all the teams that are going outside the wire. And now we're looking at all the innovation that's coming on board. So the lightning challenge, we've spent the last four days in the field. These guys are tired. It's like running a hundred mile race well, almost every day. We've put it on pause for almost 20 years. Like yeah. this was like the big thing yeah. that happened back in, you know, before Afghanistan kicked mm-hmm. off was everybody trained for the lightning yeah. challenge. And then Wars kicked off. We stopped. This yep. is like the first real one that has happened. So we, that was the most Air Force thing you've ever seen of all, said of all the Air Force things you've said. Okay. So a war interrupted you guys? Training. Pl- pl- yeah. Playing. Yeah. Pl- yeah. Okay. So. Go, go on. <laughs> well, I mean. Chow halls are really nice, though. I know. That's they would never nice. let me in them. No, They're I mean, like, look, ew, look we you. know what You're you are. Take there. your hairy, gross hands out yeah. of here. That's a, that's a real true story. It, I believe it. Because of the yeah. hair on your knuckles? So, well, I mean, just like the general demeanor that we'd walk in. They're oh, like, yeah. hey, Why you, is your uniform you still dirty? have savage blood on you. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't get to drop it from pretty airplanes that are leather seated. No Wait, is there leather seats I bet there, there is. Well, I guess you have to find out, right? No, I hey, can't. what's the material that you sit on in any of those aircraft? Is there leather? Uh, so, no, not It's cashmere. No, uh, <laughs> it's fucking cashmere, dude. <laughs> you can't. You, you don't. Well, it's there meek. is. So, there it's is, meek, there is sheepskin. Yeah. But the. Yeah. But the thing is, you Are you fucking I mean, kidding me? <laughs> you said that, but my mouth was open. I was just like, uh-uh. It's a no. nice seat. It's, a, it's sheepskin. I'm very, I don't even know if there, I sound sheepskin. So there are some covers. Yeah, but the, I mean, the deal is it's an ejection seat, so it's not super comfortable. And if you're in the Viper, it's uh, lean back about 30 degrees. So if you can imagine, like, um, yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> leaning back, which is great, except sometimes you have to be able to see. So. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Beep, beep, issues beep, every beep, once in a while. But, you know, getting back to TACP, yeah, it was on hold for a long time because, I mean, we we're busy. Guys are going out the door all the time, deploying, really fighting the war. Yeah. And uh, as stuff is starting to slow down and draw down, and we're looking at what is next for the future of warfare. What is the national defense strategy telling us? We're going to go high level and talk about what are the generals thinking we're going to do next. Yeah. War is going to look different than it has the last few years. We're not focused as much on violent extremist organizations. We're focused on great power competition. We're looking at what yeah, Russia's what doing. We're looking at what China's I'm doing. I'm in. Yeah. I still got and, four years left. And if you look at <laughs> the wars that are Sounds going like on one. in the world right now, they don't look like what we had in Baghdad wars? or Ramadi in 04. If you look at where Russia is fighting, um, you know, the Ukraine. the Ukraine. I mean, if you look at the Donbass region, eastern Ukraine, they're doing trench warfare. They're not using a lot of technology because the Russians have the ability to get in and hack those systems. Yeah. And so it goes back to old school fighting. It goes back to... Hell yeah! Yeah. I'm yes. just, yeah, I'm back, back, I'm back in it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have an E2 cool. Like, how do I get one of those? <laughs> so, this, this exactly. Is, this right? is the same so, thing that happened during the uh, uh, Afghan war with mm-hmm. Russia, right? Yeah. Until we gave them frequency hopping radios. Yeah. yeah. And, and <laughs> Until we gave it to yeah. them. 
So how, how do, how do you bring, bring that old glory? shit up? How do you bring more glory to the tech beat community and make people want to become tech Can I tell beats? a story? This will help. Sure. Yeah. A movie. All right. So um, I grew up in kind of a charismatic church. Have you ever heard somebody speak tongues? I've never heard But you've heard yeah, about yeah. it. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so I'm in Afghanistan. We we're getting our ass kicked, and um, our JTAC and the TAC PU that was co located with one of the other teams, with actually with these guys, the Checksoft guys, because um, I was a coalition asset. Okay. He started talking to three or four different aircraft that were all setting up patterns to come in and do gun runs, one that was um, doing orbits around us, just dropping down hell and saving all of our lives. But the only thing I could describe what he was doing on the radio, two different radios at the same time, was speaking in tongues. Because it wasn't real. It was like gibberish. It was like... Yeah. 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 It sounded like that. You know, go, go, come, come, come back to us. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus has come back. <laughs> but that dude Called did that six for six 20 six hours. Yeah. Like and I mean... Uh, every single aircraft was like, hey, uh, we no longer have any more ordnance on this. We have to go back and get some more, come back on station in like six hours. And then another one would come on, yep. repeat for 20 hours. And this dude just sat there speaking in tongues, saving our pathetic, hairy-handed lives. I got to tell you, the TACP community is full of the most, the biggest dirtbags I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and this is King Dirtbag right here. Yeah. But for the record, the, I, am not, the most, I am not a dirtbag. Yeah, you <laughs> Every, sure. You're all yeah. well. She's high, high 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 she probably yeah. has a monocle in her pocket. I'm just saying, they're the biggest dirtbags I've ever met in my life. My best friend of 50 in years now or so is a huge dirtbag. But they're the most like organized, on the job. You know, you everybody's had that guy in their unit that is a total piece of shit back in garrison, but they're a great soldier yeah. downrange. Yep. That's all attack PUs, basically. <laughs> 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 like they're just once once they get in theater, it's like. They do shit like that. Yeah. I'm like, wow, this is. Yeah. I thought you guys I seriously were all thought retarded, he was maybe. useless. <laughs> Up until that point, yeah. I, I debated. Yeah. I was like, man, he has pretty good looking legs. Yeah, and then all. I'd eat, of, I'd eat that. Then all of a sudden, 30 seconds into a tick, we have him in call, and I'm already getting air support. I'm like, yeah. oh, cool. Yeah. This all is right. cool. <laughs> Fuck. I'm gonna leave your leg. Guess I'm I'll, not gonna roast it. Yeah, I'm not gonna die today, so I guess you can uh, keep that leg. So, what, what's sustain. the craziest story you've been involved in personally? Oh my gosh, uh, there's a lot. But before I answer that question, I just want to go to the last one because you guys didn't give me a chance. I mean, mm. what? What's sure, the... that's drinking bros, by the way. Yeah. We apologize. That's we okay. drink often and very, very early. <laughs> and we're done. All good. No, you're not dumb. But, uh, you know, the TACP are, are absolutely the link between the ground forces and the air forces. I mean, you described it perfectly in your story, but not only do they have to understand how the ground forces work. They got to have the credibility to get out to the OP, get out to the field of the guys. They have to, you have to know that if the shit hits a the fan, they're going to be part of the team and they're not going to be a hindrance. They're an asset. And then as soon as they get on the radio, you know, it's pure gold. Okay, I went to the wrong thing. Yeah. And then the other piece of it is for the air force side is, uh, you know, they have to know and reach back into every aircraft that's out there. And now we're not just talking about what kind of iron can come off a plane. We're talking about what space assets are out there, what cyber stuff is out there. These guys are super smart. I mean, they are getting into everything, innovation across the board, developing apps with Duke University and hacking for defense, all that stuff that's going to make it awesome on the battlefield and then we can turn around and give them a couple of pieces of copper wire and a radio and go make a field expedient antenna because none of your cool shit's going to work yeah, and yeah, they can yeah. do that too yeah i qualified with my rifle last month i just want everybody to know proud of you so too. yeah i'm just right as up, if you right needed to be a better i don't even person. know how to use a radio <laughs> so i wasn't um the this is the tragic story of all that i got sent home to go to squadron officer school um Right, oh, this is as a tragic an, story? It is a tragic story because if you are a fighter, fighter pilot, pilot and you get sent home early from deployment to go to school, that makes you sad. But the good news is um, that was the right thing to do because I was heading to pilot training next. Um, and I, I managed to, to do well in my career and I'm still here you today. You back up in 07 in a Viper. I did. I knew you were doing some dropping then. Yes. I, I, uh, so I was at Blod in 07. Um, kind of funny story with that. I actually deployed with my husband. Yeah. Uh, initially, our squadron was not going to send us together because they, they didn't want it to happen. Uh, and then as a, a twist of fate uh, kind of went around, I found out on a Sunday that I was going to go be a replacement. And um, Thursday, I was f uh, leading a four ship of Vipers up initial in, uh, into Iraq. Wow. So bad. Wow. So. That's America. Crazy. America. Yeah. I did. Yes. Last question awesome. for you here. Global threat wise, global threat as a tech P, what do you think is our biggest global threat out there? 
That is a great question. <sighs> so really it's about see competition, Russia, right? So we don't know exactly what things are gonna look like next. Um, you know, we're, we're doing a lot of work talking about great power competition. What did geopolitics look like? How is the pandemic affecting what's going on in the world? We know that conditions are setting up where we have economic distress in countries. Um, so we really have to be ready for anything. And that's probably the biggest thing. We don't know which of the state or non-state actors are going to be the first thing that triggers off a, a conflict. That's why we're doing this kind of training out it's here. It's a real short list, though. Yeah. It, it's a real yeah. short list. Like, it's anywhere, like right? Countries. It's, I it's mean, yeah. I mean, right now, we're facing uh, one of one of my good friends that used to be uh, a, an ALO for the Navy. He was mm -hmm. a, a Hornet pilot oh, that's yeah. now in charge of um, Air liaison officer. Yeah, oh, Air yes. liaison yes. officer. Yes. He was he was he was, he was, he was with the SEAL team. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, he's part of the Navy's cyber divisions mm -hmm. that do certain things, and we are being flooded with counter. Uh, information mm -hmm. uh, on both uh, on all sides from Russia and China. Yeah, you're like, looking at about 35 to 4,500 attacks per month, give or take, like yeah. individual attacks on individual. I mean, they've got the they've account. got reporters on payroll. They've yeah. got everything. Yeah. Like weird. like yeah. a lot of the things that you see circulating social media now, take them for face value because well, I mean, you like, never know where it came from. But I just assume that anyways, right? And, and don't you guys as well? Where it's like I assume we're probably trying to do it to other countries. Yeah. I mean, no, we have been doing it to other countries, and we've been doing it for a really long time. But the Russians have been, well, Russia and China have been doing it for a decade. They've been playing yeah, this yeah. long game. Yeah. So like they, they have pages that. that have tens of thousands of followers, yeah. legit followers, yeah. mm -hmm. and it is a bot farm. Yeah. You know, yeah. but they have ten thousand real people that are like, oh yeah, I like this meme page. You're like. <laughs> so if you want to if you want to get into to some of the nerdy analysis of it, there's a lot of really good information out there. Um, in 2017, the EU and NATO set up what they call the Hybrid Threat Center of Excellence in Helsinki, and they put out a bunch of papers where they analyze that. And you can take a look and see real hard evidence of what is going on in terms of the information sphere. And that's why we keep talking about with TACP, it's not just about iron coming off jets. I mean, that's cool and that's a great part of our job and we're really good at it. But now we're expanding into what other effects can we bring to bear on the battlefield so that we can get the ground forces into the position that they need. Let's just pull the plug, go back to trench warfare. I'm in. Let's I'm in. Do it. I'm in. <laughs> All melee weapons. Sure. You're uh, Really? So do you have a favorite team you want to win this competition? Oh, uh, America. <laughs> Probably, right? Are you no, yeah. about this Every commander has their favorite. Who's your face yes. I thought you meant, I thought you meant geopolitical. So as a wing commander with 16 squadrons, it's like asking a mom who her favorite child is. She might have one. She, she has one. one. Yeah. Has she one. But she she's not going to tell you who that one. is. Uh, but I do want to give a great shout out to the, the 3rd ASOG and the 803rd Ops Support Squadron who designed this competition. They put a lot of thought into it so that it's not just who's the fastest fastest, who's the brawniest, who can shoot the straightest. They are challenging these guys at every single level over endurance. So, you know, we went out on Monday. They did a combat fitness test, which they're used to doing because we have our own tier two. But we threw a twist in and said, all right, here's a Marine combat fitness test. Oh. You've not, done, never done it before. Then they do the air assault. with me, they did. Yeah. <laughs> then, then they did the air assault obstacle course. And then we threw him in the sim and made him do math. Mm. So awesome. it's uh, it's awesome. totally endurance to really show not just who's the best looking because I know that would be a whole day of competition, but um, who's really the best at the tech P business. I, I feel like if you were at high schools, by the way, you should try as a recruiter, you would get you everyone to sign up. So well, hopefully, that's, can I compete uh, that's next year? Uh, Do I have to get a haircut? Yeah, we're working on Wait, it. Wait, was so. that yes to the haircut or yes, I, I can well, compete? Well, yes, you would have to get a haircut. Um, <laughs> we could probably raise some money to see who would do that. But okay. um, we're we're working on uh, trying to see what we can do to expand the competition. So I can't yeah, give we, you a, a hard yes, but I can tell you that uh, we would love to have more people to be able to participate as team. we come out. Can you imagine? Awesome, awesome. Well, hey, thank you for being on the show yeah, today. Really Thanks for your that. time. And good luck in the competition here. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I Crush appreciate it. that. So, uh, you think you'll win, yes or no? Well, I'm the commander, so. Yeah, she, <laughs> she wins, period. She wins, period. So. Uh, unless Germany takes it, and then we're all pissed. <laughs> Wait, is Germany here? Yes, Germany's here. Where? 
Yeah. What? <laughs> Guys, thanks thanks for uh, giving me a few minutes of airtime. Let me you. brag on our TACP because uh, JT knows, and, and he may not be the best example, but these guys are <laughs> awesome. Please so. this. <laughs> cut that out. No, leave it. Leave it. Highlight but, that point. But here's the thing. I mean, I, I've been in and out of the TACP community for 10 years. The reason I'm here and back is because I love this job and I love this community. These guys are awesome, and they deserve as much press as you can give them. Awesome. awesome. All right. Thank, thanks. thank you for being here. We Absolutely. greatly appreciate it. All right, JT. <laughs> Enjoy the day. We'll be out there in a little bit. Um, Tim, if she you came too. to your high school, you yeah. would sign up. Oh, my God. But for a myriad of reasons. You know, she walked in the room. I'm like, I'm in. And then she's like, I'm a fighter pilot. I'm like, I'm in. And then she's like, I'm married to a fighter pilot. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> but I still have a chance. I'll still enlist. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll still enlist. Did, um. Are you texting? Who are you texting right yeah. now? Are why, you texting why is to my get leg back warm? In? Our ad lady. That's that's uh, nice, she isn't can it? Wait. That she actually can was wait. comfortable. Yeah, like we were warm. I was. Warm. It was a good. It was a good. It, it was, was a bonding nice session. It was a nice mid-show we get the, snuggle. I want that. I want that video clip bad. Oh, you'll like, have it. Like you'll, that you'll have right it there is a meme in itself. Big Dan, will you you, you'll give him that clip tonight. She was yeah. in a hurry. I was going to have her say right. I was going to be like, hey, before you leave, go ahead and say David Goggins is a better tag than JT. Can we just relive that moment where she looked at you and she's like. You may not be the, the best, best example, example. <laughs> of what Jack P is. And she has eye contact because it was like she knew she had to say it. You know what, though? It is, I'm, not, I'm not out of touch with reality. Yeah. Notice how I just accepted my lashing yeah. from mom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it, was, it was like we were at the principal's office again, and she, she's just going, yeah, yeah well, you know. Where, yeah. where are He's all one Air, of them. Air He's Force one of the kids. Are so, like, polished. Mm. Always. Yeah, she, I mean, look, she was ready to go and speak at the RNC right there. Yeah. Like, that was, uh, like, yep. she's an accomplished speaker. I, I feel like everybody yep. is like that, except for Jared. I'm rooting, I'm rooting yeah. for the 14th ASOS. Oh. This is oh. my favorite team today. Team. Yeah. That's my favorite unit I was in. Well, the 116th was pretty good, too. So, two mm. favorite units. All right. Are they both here? Uh, I don't think the 116th is, but uh, the 14th is. How I'm rooting they, for the how, 14th. How are they faring? Uh, the 14th is in the top three, which they, they better be because they're the only airborne unit. Yeah, that's... Yeah, well, well, so... We'll find out So the happens. paratroopers better be kicking some ass. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, are you still in, by the way? I am, yeah. You are. He and just got promoted. Yeah. Did. Show did. your greatness to I him. I think stand well, show, in a position. Yes. I don't, what do you do with... You I don't know. He don't needs to do grovel. Anything. Get down grovel. and thank no. Tim for his Just suck it. Just suck it. I'm not suck the guy dick. in high school who's like, oh, I wanted to enter the military just and I got asthma. For his I wasn't that guy. I was like, I'm a comedian. That's what I do. I got asthma. I got flat general. Oh, you got your one star. You're not a, nice, yeah, you're yeah. one star nice. now, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, so I wear it on my flash, but then I wear a different rake on here because I don't know if those actually have to match. No, they don't. I don't no. think. I mean, we could look at the rake. I saw that on an episode of Mass when they were trying to get the radio guy into the officers' hall. Yeah. As drink. long as I get a discount at Thrill. Sizzler, I know I'm good. Corporal Captain, I believe they called yeah. it. How yeah. long do you plan on going? So I'm at uh, 17 years this January. Holy and shit! They they do this thing where I'm like right on track. Where you know you you make E eight right around the like fifteen to seventeen, so I'm at sixteen right now, mm -hmm. and so that means Sergeant Major will kind of be knocking at the door right at twenty, and they but then you have to have three years of yeah, retainability, retainability, so yeah. you either have yeah, but to that's pretty good for the uh, kind of the the legacy. Yeah, I don't care about any of that though. Mm. I, as soon as they're like, is it worth three years of your life yeah. of doing paperwork? I mean, yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> right? Major Come on, Kennedy, though. Smadge, your Majesty. Yeah. All my friends that are, are SAR majors are, are, of course, like you're going to make a bigger impact as a SAR major. I'm like, that's what they tell you in the SAR major academy. Nobody, nobody actually believes. It. Do you believe that? No, because they, because everybody, including the sergeant majors who've gone, the sergeant major who've gone there, call it the lobotomy factory. Yeah, it's just it, all of them say that. Pure yeah, Stockholm syndrome. That. All that's of them that say is. that. Yeah. So like, fuck no. No. Do you ever get any shit for what you post on Instagram? All the time. Um, All right, is this a joke? I, no, I'm, I'm asking because uh, somebody... Not, no, he, be more specific. From yeah. I'll, I'll say yes. From, oh, from, yes. from the special uh, ops community. So it's hilarious. Some of my worst critics are the special operations. I've, I mean, I'll never throw a stone at, at a veteran. Like, I support the community in every imaginable way. But they forget that I have to speak to the civilian audience, mm -hmm. right? And my goal is to try to elevate 
the general American public to what is really, really normal in our For world. Us. We yeah. understand the lingo. We understand yeah. the stuff. So, like, like, I'll post things like, that is the most cringeworthy thing, the most embarrassing green brain in the panel. Are you really special operations? And, like, relentless. There's meme pages dedicated to, to making fun of me. But they've never once taken a step back and thought about who I'm talking to. And I'm talking to, like... The guy that drives the minivan to drop his kids off at work, at school, to then go to work driving that minivan and then come back home to pick up his kids and make it back home because his wife is also working. And somewhere in between there, he has to get the motivation to get, to get a workout in, to be a good father, to be a good lover. And, but yeah, the special operations community is pretty rough with me. Because the reason I ask, I get an email and said, hey, man, next time Tim's on the show, ask him this fucking question, man, because yeah. I think it's bullshit or whatever. And I was like, you know, if you don't have famous people and i hate to call you that in front of your face because we're friends but like if you don't have famous people who are getting it out into the public to me you uh uh jocko all these guys do more for civilians like us who are like all right great now we can put a face and an attitude and yeah, a swagger to, to what you actually on the, do on, a, on the popular target I any mean, anybody that's I successful too, but yeah. also I've, i mean i've gotten in fucking plenty of arguments about tim and marcus yeah. and everything oh fuck those guys really show me when they've ever been mean or or bad people to anyone yeah and it's like please show me yeah. show me where you ever fucked anybody over in business show me where you ever took anybody mo- anybody's money or how about when you do Google it, you see when he actually stepped up and did things for nonprofits, the community, for yeah. this. Because a lot of guys don't understand, like, you you especially, too. Like, we have a crazy busy schedule, but we still say yes every time those, those we get asked, hey, would you come speak to our unit? Hey, would you come out to Reveille Ranch and talk to a bunch of TACPs going through a fucking yeah. lightning challenge? Yeah. You could have had a day off today. Yeah. You're not getting paid for this? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> the, the one that hurts the worst is when they uh, they attack how I do at my job. And yeah, but nobody knows. But it's I, all third party, third party. Man, bullshit. I heard that Tim did this. I'm like, yeah. Do you I know heard. anybody that was ever with me in country ever? ever. No, because I know them all. Because I'm still friends with them. And I still work with them all. You know, like, like, I argued with a dude on on Instagram that you know became a Green Beret in 2015. I'm like. That was 10 years after Operation Wet Wings <laughs> happened. Oh. You don't fucking oh, know Rack- anybody. Like, oh, I reckon a decade have, before that. You have a third, decade. You have third-party hate for somebody that you that a that a guy that you know on your team knew a guy that might have been part of Red Wings when it happened, and it was like, fuck off with yeah. your bullshit. But it just reinforces, <laughs> I got to keep doing the right thing. You know, like, I, I hate using, like, do the right thing when nobody's looking. Mm. But in this case, everybody's looking all the time at everything that I do and I say, so I just got to do the right thing. And um, I take that into everything that I do, whether it's training, shooting, training people, my military career. Um, you know, how, how long has it been you not drinking? 25 days. You know? Wow. Awesome. Wow. That's like, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm wearing a uniform or I'm deployed, like, there's not a drop ever anywhere. Because, like, I got to do the right thing. And um, it also makes life better and sex better yes. and sleep yes. better. Yes, I'm, I'm having the time of my life. I cannot, I cannot. How, how long have you been uh, completely sober, no drugs, drinking, all that stuff? Ten years. Wow. No yep. kidding. What was the deciding factor? Um, Afghanistan in 2008. Something, something crazy happened? Yeah, I mean, we got our ass kicked, and um, there's a PKM machine gun stick out of a window, and I threw a grenade through that window where there's a machine gun lighting us up. And there's a bunch of women and children in there. And um, I went back and drank myself into oblivion, and um, a team got in a tick, and I couldn't. I was drunk. And what do you what do you say to? I'm a piece of shit. I'm a loser. Um, did you say, "Hey, man, I was drinking and I fucked this up," or what? What no, happens no, no, no. like I, that? Like, no, all I, everything I did was right um, up to the, the drinking, and then I'm drinking and I couldn't go rescue. The I buddies. couldn't do anything, yeah. right? Like, I'm like, I'm not gonna go hop in a helicopter. I'm not gonna grab my kid. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm like, I'm gonna sit here until I sober up. And mm-hmm. like, when I sobered up, I was filled with guilt and shame, and I was disgusted with myself. And then it was like, never again. Will I put myself in that situation? Yep. It makes sense. Because I always wonder what the defining thing is. For Jared, he, he has a 23 year old girlfriend. And Four, 24. 20, okay, she's 24. 24. 24. And that's obviously going to make him want to get a little pep in his step yep. and get back in the game. Uh, you've, got, you've got a bet on the line, too. Yeah, that, yeah that, the drinking thing came from a bet. Yeah, yeah. The, boys, the boys said there's no way you could go until March. And like, they, don't, they obviously don't know. Like, when somebody says I can't do something, guess what? Yeah. 
I'll look do at, it. Look at those crazy blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're pure crazy. Like, and this and this hasn't been hard. Like, uh, honestly, it's been nothing but beneficial. I have more time. I'm getting more work done. I'm getting more ideas. I'm I'm getting organized yeah. a lot better. Like. Yes, I'm I don't think the world needs an organized Jared Taylor, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's dangerous. That's a frightening thought. It's, it's like you, for drinking with you, it's like putting a governor on a car for a teenager. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's too dangerous to let you loose like that. <laughs> you got to keep you down with the rest of us <laughs> normal <laughs> people. It can't happen. <laughs> Air Force ac- accelerating? No. Can't happen. No. Um, what's up next for you? Uh, so I'm finishing up a book. How is that going, by the way? Because it's, boy, the books are brutal, aren't they? It's, um, yeah, it's really, really humiliating. Um, just, like, put it out there. Yeah. And, you know, th- thankfully, you, I mean, you guys know Nick. Nick, Nick has, been, was, has been there for most of these big events in my life. Mm-hmm. So being able to contribute details that I, I have intentionally forgotten, it's pretty cool. And, is he your co-author author on this yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah. And, you um, need one because yeah. when you're talking about yourself – it is hard because there's a lot of stories you don't want to share because it seems too braggadocious. Yeah. Therefore, you need somebody there to say, hey, man, I've got to ask you these questions and get the details and then yeah. put them in there because you never will. Nope. <laughs> and he, and, but it's funny because he'll, like, he'll, he'll remember and he'll know and he'll ask me and I'm like, I don't want to talk about this. Yeah, but you have to. Yeah, then, then we talk about it and then it, then it turns into something cool. Um, and uh, it'll, it'll, I, I hope, you know, the whole point, just like everything that I do, is, is to inspire and encourage people to go and, and do rad shit. Um, my company, Sheepdog Response, our mission is to preserve and protect human life. And, um, we, you know, we, we trained 3,000 people last year. And um, we know for a fact our students have, two of them have been in shootings, mm-hmm. law, law enforcement. And um, we had a corrections officer have to fight a guy that had slit open his wrist so she she fought him to get him to the ground, subdued him, and then put a tourniquet on him and saved his life. So like these are just pure heroes that are out there every single day. Um, and uh, so I, we just bought a 20,000 square facility in, in Austin, Texas for our headquarters and our new private school. It's great. We're launching a, a children's school to build the next generation of patriots. And when does that launch? Because we all just moved out here. I'd love to put my kids in that. September 13th will be our our uh, doors open first day of school day. 2021? Uh-huh. Great. Yeah. and Because um, you have kids. I do. Uh, talk about the importance of teaching them proper gun safety and training. Because I, I feel like in today's world, especially with where we're headed, there isn't anything more important than that, is how to protect yourself. You're, I know your show is called Hard to Kill, but yeah. you really do have to make yourself hard to kill Yeah, but also in just from the, world. from the kid perspective. Yeah. You don't see a whole lot of kids... And like rural Kentucky, accidentally shooting their foot off no. with a shotgun, no. yeah. or shooting because their, their parents take the them out to the woods and they, they teach them how to they shoot, shoot proper, a watermelon yeah. or something and show them what a shotgun can do. That's what happened to me. Yeah, like I saw a watermelon get shot in front of me. Like, okay, this thing is not a fucking joke. Or I touched Great. the gun one time without my dad there, and I got scuffed get the up. Thunder, for like, yeah, <laughs> I got scuffed up for like yeah. two up. one t five minutes. But that's the problem. Yeah. Ain't nobody getting scuffed, scuffed up, up no more. No, I got. We see up. the attitudes. <laughs> the yeah. attitudes are coming. Yeah. Uh, this this school, um, we're not going to be scuffing anybody up, and and um, but they are going to be barrel chested, freedom fighting, American loving children that are going to be mm. that are going to learn about failure, and they're going to struggle. They're not going to any trophy medals. They're going to mm. say the pledge of allegiance every single day. They're going to learn math. They're going to learn science. They're going to learn mm. real history, not like a new perspective or a new take on what history means. But they're going to learn what happened, and then they can you know we're going to take a Socratic method to everything. So. We're not going to give anything besides the information and the questions yeah. that are generated are off of their own minds. When did we start editorializing history? Doesn't that seem problematic? Yeah, you know what we should do? We should curate yeah, history. Like, I know. What the fuck? Dude, just say plan. what happened, and then we can talk about what happened. Yeah. But say what happened first. Yeah, we, we have editorialized history before. Um, who did that well? Oh, was it? The Nazis. There it is. There and then is. they killed like 15 million Jews. So maybe we shouldn't do that again. No, we shouldn't do that no. again. Is hunting Hitler over, by the way? God, Man, I don't want to. Yes, no, I will, they yes. found him. Yeah, yeah he's dead. <laughs> he's right over there. <laughs> yeah. He's dead. Well, uh, everybody loved that show. Uh, it's such a great show. It's a so, great show. Season four, which we had written um, when we went to the network, and they looked at we were going to be going to the Middle East, where so a bunch of Nazis went to South America, mm-hmm. and then a lot of them came to the United States under Operation Paperclip. Yeah, helped NASA, helped us get to the moon. Yep. Um, I don't know, like you know. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. I don't, I don't know about that stuff. I don't know how, whatever. But a whole bunch of them went to the Middle East. And some of the founders of the Mujahideen were, fe- were advised by these beautiful 
Blue eyed, mm. blonde hair. Curious. I I wasn't there. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was. I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't there. What you the hell? See, I wasn't there. You see these pictures and these names um, of these guys that were advising the original Mujahideen. So yeah. what we know of like the Taliban, Al Qaeda. Mm. If you trace all that back to the Mujahideen, you find Nazis. Nazis that should have been hung after Nuremberg, mm. but they found anyway. So History Channel was like, ooh. I don't know if we can touch this because this these are still political organizations that exist today. Yeah. Well, and, after the whole narco thing with Netflix and yeah. their oh, yeah. producer getting, you don't want to go fucking full Charlie Hebdo either. No. no. I yeah. mean, I know well, the I History do. Channel doesn't. I do yeah. personally, yes, but yeah. the History Channel does not want armed terrorists showing up their house. No. Not or, at all. And, and speaking of the History Channel, like, did you find it as the seasons were going on because of what was happening? happening politically in this country that they would change storylines and things like that and be yeah. like hey man that's too much to touch right now yep um the yeah i mean you you really hit the note then the nail on the head there um in the middle of filming things as we're hearing the word nazi and fascist become more and more prevalent in in like regular casual conversation, conversation in the godwin's States. law right yeah and we're like it's fucking stupid can we co- can we talk about this? Mm. And so we had to be really sensitive and that the final edits of the show omitted a lot of things that, that, that were, I think important to, to say, but, um, current day, everybody that says, ah, Nazi, you don't know Nazis. No. Yes. Well, I mean, it's like the you average, like, and the average Antifa child thinks that they're anti-fascist. You have no goddamn idea what fascism looks like, you skinny white bitch. Yeah. Like, you have no <laughs> fucking clue what it looks no, like. No, you don't know if what you a did, fucking mass grave if you looks did, like. You don't know if what you fucking... did, you'd be sucking everybody's dick around you, thinking whatever the fuck you pray to that you were born in this goddamn country. In this right? time period. In Portland, Oregon. I mean, Oregon. holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Like, know, what, what one stress? One of the most beautiful places on the planet. What fucking... What's the plight of the middle class in Portland that it's so bad that it's producing these cops? I don't know. If I graduated with a degree in feminism, I don't know what I would do with my life either. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. but when you hear that, when you hear uh, the term Nazi or fascist yeah. being thrown at Trump and the Republicans all the time, I mean, you actually did a show about real Nazis and about Hitler. Like, how offending is that where you're just like, Jesus, how offensive is that where you're just like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah, so... Um, we say TV show, but it was it was reality TV, and like, it was real, yeah. Yeah, I was, we were in South America, and I was following around legitimate Nazis. I would sit down at a bar, and I'd look at a guy that had an Iron Cross tattooed onto his neck, or he had the swastika with a palm for his grandpa. And when people are removed from ideas by a generation or geographically, mm-hmm. they become more fanatical about them. It's not like they're like, oh, my grandpa was yeah, a Nazi. Yeah, they didn't, because they didn't experience it. Right. It's just an idea. So, yeah. so, but the, the idea in the echo chamber. And it becomes nostalgic, too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So yeah. They, they start putting it on this pedestal. Mm-hmm. And they start idolizing these ideas. And their grandpa that fought yeah. in the war, you know, and he was trying to do all these great things and, like, the, the, the rise of the Fourth Reich. Mm-hmm. But then they get crazier and crazier and crazier. And I'm sitting across from these guys, and they're legitimately talking about a Fourth Reich. And so, like... How do you not to lose your, your mind? To your question, yes. when some kid is like, ah, oh, that guy's a Nazi because I don't agree with them. I just want to like reach down his throat and then take <laughs> out his soul, eat it, shit it out, take that shit, and then put it back inside of him because it would be better than what I just yanked out. At least shit has mass. <laughs> you know? Shit has mass. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. actually substance there. Yeah. And there's no substance in these people. No, it's 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 ec- it's, ec- it's empty words and yeah. an echo chamber. It's, it's nonsense. Endlessly. Yeah, it's just nonsense. So we've had this conversation on the show numerous times. Do you think it'll get better or only worse after this election? Worse. I agree. Yeah. Uh, in, no. In, in either the way, the information pendulum is so fucked. Yes. Like we yep. can, we we know we cannot trust the media at no. all yeah. anymore. They. There, we can't trust social media. I mean, Jack Dorsey got on fucking Zoom two days ago and looked like a fucking jerk off. Yeah. Like, that was insane. At least, at least insane. Zuckerberg is coming around, going. Yeah. Oh, this is probably yeah. a bad idea. I probably should shift sides because I could actually see jail time. Yeah. Jack Dorsey is a fucking idiot mm. and is going to probably end up in jail. Do they not eventually. understand? Like, I mean, his 
do they understand history? That when that pendulum of lies and censorship swings too far, like and they it are, finally is breaking. Then it breaks, yeah. and the break result is, in this case, it'll be antitrust laws. It might be con- the complete. Well, the break, breakdown. The break is usually the upper class or the ruling class, whomever it happens to be. In this case, the tech companies get fucking murdered in their homes. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I mean, if you You're look at start seeing, if yeah, you I mean, look at all the other countries where this kind of shit has happened, the Michigan governor, like the Bolsheviks, yeah. this they is pissed, what has happened. She pissed so many people off. Two groups were fucking conspiracizing to fuck her. Two different militia but whatever groups. Whatever the fuck you can say. They were yeah. conspiring to fucking kidnap her. Yeah. And no, if there's anybody out there that's thinking about going and killing a politician. No, I will a, come and kill you if you even think idea. about that. I will I murder you, you in myself. Your bed and kill you. Yes, yeah. fuck you. With that said, if you're a douchebag politician, this is what happens. <laughs> when you, like It has happened throughout history. Every time, if you go to any, like, I'm sorry. Bring you, back tar and feathering. Yeah, you go to the supermarket. You can buy a little bit of, of bread, and you can buy a little bit of milk, but you can't buy seeds. You can't buy vegetables. Mm. You can't buy paint, and this is what the Michigan government did. Yeah. The people are not going to like that. And then they're going to uproot you yeah. fucking your, your, yeah. real quick. And there's two ways. You're going to get at the ballot box. Or they're, or they're going to die, and that yeah. happens historically. Yeah. Um, I really hope that we do it through the ballot box because that's the right way. Well, we mm-hmm. got to we got to get rid of this PC bullshit because uh, you know I'm sure you listen to Jordan Peterson like everybody else. If you, if we can't fight with our words, then we're going to end up fighting with our fists. Yeah. And these people that are on the other side, on the left, they don't want to fight with fists because we've been doing it for 20 years. Like, what the fuck is the plan here, dude? Yeah. I, I don't understand that. There's no win for you. That's there. like no. walking into a fucking uh, 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 a fence full of pit bulls. And you're like, well, I could just walk out of here, or I could fuck up these pit bulls, brother. <laughs> no, you're going to die, motherfucker. What are you thinking? <laughs> Jesus fucking uh, Christ. It doesn't sanity. make any sense. So, so what happens in, because I know you do a lot of, I, I hate to use the word secret, but like you do a lot of crazy shit around the United States that nobody knows about, and we won't discuss on this show. One of the things you told me off air a long time ago, and I was like, oh, fuck, you were there? Um and it's crazy to me. Your life is absolutely insane to me. Having seen all of these areas and pockets around the United States, what happens in Seattle? What happens in a Portland if a Biden wins or something like that? Or, or if Trump wins, does it fucking keep escalating? Yeah, I mean, um, at, at some point, these idiots have to realize that there's consequence for breaking the law. Yeah. And when Trump tweets rule and order... Um, you know, if that's not an incendiary comment, th- there's no way that stability and commerce can can ever happen. If you, I mean, if you're a believer in BLM, then you should want rule and order because that brings in commerce. Commerce brings in yeah. prosperity. Economic prosper- equality is the most yeah. important thing. Yeah. And then with that stability and security yep. becomes every opportunity for these lower demographic, lower socioeconomic demographics to be raised up. Yeah, this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. By the way, this isn't huh. fucking new. It's been yeah. around for a couple of minutes Forever. now. Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. But, if you continue down the path of anarchy and chaos, censorship and fucking yeah, yeah it like never it works. It's hey, never worked who, once who's in been human countries history. Where that, that that happened, and what did you do while you were there? Murder. Shot people. I shot people. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking killed people. Yeah. So let me tell you what happens if you keep doing that. You're gonna be dead. Yeah. So don't do that. Yeah, I'm. I'm just curious because it, it. You know, we've made our own predictions on this show over the last week. We had Alex Jones on for the election prediction show and all that stuff. Like we're fully preparing for Trump to win. Shit to go down in Austin and, and these, some of these other cities. Yeah. And I don't know how it gets any better unless you send in the National Guard or something like that. Well, I mean, here in, in, uh, in Texas, Abbott's going to clearly send in the state police in, me, into Austin at least. I don't yeah. know if he'll send National Guard as well. Well, you've lived here longer than us. Yeah. What do you think? Because he did yeah, it if for, you think about rioting in Texas... Go Good somewhere luck. else. No, I mean, <laughs> so, let me tell you about how long the did Texas the, DPS. How long did the Chaz Chop thing last here? Thirty-five minutes, I think. Yeah, thirty minutes. Like, seriously, it was thirty-five. And yeah, it was like, it was, and then they, they ran them over with horses. With horses, the state police ran them yeah. out of town on horseback. Like, come on, man, it's still Texas. And behind the horses, unbeknownst to everybody with the camera that thought they were capturing some human rights violation, Oppression. were a bunch of plain vans. Yeah, jump out, boys! Pipe hitters. Jump that if out, those boys. horses didn't do what they're gonna do, <laughs> yeah. guess what? Yeah, and those van doors opened. <laughs> Your pink hair ain't saving you from this one. <laughs> the jump Street out, boys! Run, run. Teeth are coming loose. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to behold it. I mean, I've just been like, yeah. this is amazing, amazing. Yeah. Somebody pour me a drink. And then yeah. I, would, I would have broken my my absence. No, I can't. I can't. To watch that, I, I have to hide from some of my friends now because I don't okay. want to tech. I don't want to have my tests. Yeah, look, it's getting crazy. November third is going to be out of control. Uh, I, I hope we even answer then because I want to move on either way, yeah. right? If, yeah. if if everybody's got to deal I with mean, this I bullshit, I really hope for the next to rub it years. in. I'm hoping by November fourth, I'm like, ha 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 ha. 
You guys can sit the fuck back down it's and gonna, let I the think people it's take that, a minute. <laughs> Either way, too. yeah. Either way, let you know, the contributors like, to society actually make the decisions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there the, it is. That's the thing. Let I'm, it go, I'm in the belief. Let it go. No, let it go. Let, let, it go. It. let it air it out, Tim. I mean, the, if you the are on any form of aid, you should not have a vote. No. I don't agree with that. Well, you can disagree, but I it's do. like yeah. if we're taking, it's, a, it's just like this. It's, if we're a hundred people right now surviving mm-hmm. in this in this area, and you refuse to work or anything like that. Right. To well, help, how about to pay taxes? Group. Refusal. Well, I mean, to get that. That's uh, there's a uh, uh, Scotus has already ruled on that. You can't do that. The amount or whether or not you pay taxes cannot be a factor whether or not you get a vote. If you pay taxes, I'm not saying. I'm not saying one cent. You file a W two. Right. Even if it's zero, you're saying zero. Yeah. I mean, that's fine. I mean, but who doesn't do that? A lot of people. A lot of people really? don't. Really? They don't, yeah. don't file yeah. at all? At all. Yeah. Like, why? Like, a lot of people. Like if a lot if of you're yeah, in a, a financial situation where you don't need to file, then you usually get money for free. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's not them. So who is it? Just assholes? Yeah. I mean, if you're a criminal, you can't vote. Uh, well, it's like also, if you criminal. make under a certain amount of money, you don't have I'm to just file. Saying, so if like, we're paying for these programs, why the hell do, do the people that receive the programs get a fucking say? Because it's America. Because it's America. That's why. Um, I just want, I'm, I'm the, the. But it is an interesting conversation. Who it, should voting be a, a right or a privilege? I think that's a really good conversation. To have. Privilege, yeah. Because of Starship be, Troopers, mostly, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great book. Become a citizen. <laughs> like, I don't think earn it's, your I don't, citizenship. I don't think you have to earn citizenship via military service, but yeah, some kind of service. I think this is real. I think now, instead of cheers. from there from elementary school on, instead of learning a foreign language, or maybe in addition to, have. A requirement for graduation of each step, maybe even each grade, be some kind of community service, right? From the you're time about to you're working my school, from the time you're <laughs> able to understand what the fuck service is, which actually probably before that, when you're seven or eight years old, you, every year you should ha- you should have some kind of service requirement, whatever it is, to graduate that grade, on through high school, maybe even through college. Yeah. I mean, but it, if we can't teach our children how important it is to forget about yourself and think about other people and do shit for other people, then, then this country will not survive. Exactly this where country we're at won't right survive. But let me tell you about what I deserve, though. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> what I deserve. Get yeah. fucked with what you deserve. Yeah. I think how many saying, times do you hear that? We're all actually saying the same thing. Yeah, we are. Just for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I think this, this would be a long... Because there, there is so many people out there bitching about what they deserve. If you're not but helping having carry not the log, anything. you don't get to help us decide where we're taking it. Exactly. <laughs> That's a fair point. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. But it, it's, really it's good never going to change. In my, it's my like, fear, hey, we're going to set this down here, right here. We're good. No, yeah. no, 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 no. I need it all the way <laughs> over top there. that hill. Yeah, but, but you, you weren't fucking carrying it. Yeah, but yeah. you also have to understand that when you put uh, caveats into institutions like that, inevitably somebody's going to take advantage of it and try to fuck Absolutely. people over, right? But also we've lost like a the complete, Russian, we've lost a complete generation. Uh, uh, personal accountability at all. For this now, whole generation. Now yeah. it's all, yeah, but what about the mother that has seven kids that can't afford... Look, what about the mother that fucking got seven fucking kids? Yeah. yeah. There's, is there no accountability at all for anybody's decision? I mean, individual yeah. responsibility is, is what the founder, founding fathers, in, in their wisdom, knew was going to be res- necessary for this constitutional republic to be able to exist. That's the only thing about individual this country that matters. Individual liberty is the only thing. And it, again, it comes with the, the implied task of individual responsibility, yeah. right? It's the only thing that matters. That flag right there stands for a lot of dead friends of ours, a lot of people in the past, all sorts of things. But most importantly, it stands for individual liberty. That's what these guys cared about most. Even though they were deeply flawed people, they were slave owners, they were fuck. A lot of them were criminals. Shit. Yeah. Abraham Lincoln was a piece of shit, dude. He bribed everybody to get the 13th Amendment passed. Yeah. But... Individual liberty is what it was about. It was about fucking doing whatever I can to make sure these people are free. And that's what America fucking does. You know, when we stop doing that, we start looking back at ourselves and wondering what we deserve, then we become a bunch of cunts, right? And we, this whole generation now is a bunch of cunts. It's, it's embarrassing. Yeah, It's it embarrassing, is. honestly. And to go back to what you were saying earlier about your school, about uh, teaching real history. Um, as we move forward with all of this shit and yeah. the PC and the political correctness and all, all the, everything— they're going to start rewriting history. So therefore, these textbooks... Oh, they're uh, there already was, getting wiped. They, they've been doing it they're for five wiped. years. There was a study that uh, they didn't know the Holocaust exists. Was, was it 1913? Yeah. Yeah, like 85% of kids under, under the 15 the or something history? like under that. Under the age of 16, 16 19. don't know about the Holocaust 16, or Anne 19. Frank or anything. 16, 19. 16, 19? Yeah. It's... 1619, yeah. the new well, history. You just listen yeah. to her? Yeah. You all listen she, to me? I say it three times? You're like, oh, she just she's did a video about she, it. she says it. <laughs> she did make a video about it yesterday. Think, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, whatever. So, yeah, I, I think it's important that you're doing that because if it's not you, 
It's nobody else, and it's not going to be our school system. I can yeah. promise you that. No, it won't be. You no, know, it's the, funny. Uh, Texas actually controls the curriculum for a lot of the country, right? Because everything goes through uh, all the all the textbooks for the entire country are printed here in Texas. That's right. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald shot from there, right? Yeah. Yeah. No. What the fuck are you talking the about? The book's depository. The book's depository. No. What? He was up there. He wasn't putting Lee books Harvey. up his ass. Lee, he put Lee a book up his ass and then shot. killed Kennedy. You, all of us at this table know he didn't even take the shot. He put one book up his ass and then shot President Kennedy. We all at know the book's that. Depository. Nobody yeah. depository. He did dude. not shoot President Kennedy. Ross the real guy's Ross name was Ross Kenneth Marlowe. <laughs> yeah, and he was working under the direct Do you even know about that? Kenneth Marlowe. Look that name up. Let's be real about that. What? I don't, know. I don't know where we are right now. No, we're at the book depositories Kenneth where we're at. That's Marlo. where they made all the textbooks and all that shit. Um, and those are getting distributed throughout Texas. Dan says that's going to save America. I don't no, think no, no, so. No, no, no. I didn't say it would save America. Texas is deeply flawed in the way they create these textbooks. Yeah, our, they allow our, all sorts of outside influence. It's consultants from all over the country that come in and tell them what to put in and what not to put in textbooks. Put the fucking history in there, bitch. Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Why are we debating yeah. about history? This isn't the Council of Nicaea and 336 AD to decide which books go in the Bible. This is actual history. Yeah. Not somebody's opinion on stuff. These are facts. Yeah, I don't, I don't care you about cannot your change opinions that stuff. on gender. You can believe whatever you want about gender. Yeah. To include your and I think yes. with individual responsibility, we have to be like, and uh, individual freedom, cool, do whatever you want, because we believe in individual, individual yeah. liberty, yeah. but you can't tell me I have to fucking what science it. looks like, because yeah. science is pretty straightforward. Well, that's, that's Peterson's argument. Like He was like, yeah, if you want to transition and have me call you she, that's, I don't care about don't that. Care. But you make a law and tell me to do that, you can suck my fucking dick, yeah. dude. Never suck will I do dick. that. You make any law telling me what I can or cannot say or do, then you can suck Oh, it. guess what? Canada did it. Yeah, they certainly yeah. did. They'll jail yeah. you if you misgender yeah. somebody. Yeah. Well, we should take Good a trip job, up there. Canada. And the fear of that is if the wrong person gets into office, that will happen yeah, here as well. And then we're going to all have to take it. And that would never last. Or open up our own The current schools. Supreme Court, now, no way. Well, if they pass the court, last know, we're like, wait a second. Yeah. Well, there's, there, it's 1869 is the last time any alteration has been made to the Supreme Court. It would be pretty unpopular if they tried to do it right now, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean that would be that would be a, that'd be we a that, nuclear option. But you, when you look at Malcolm, Malcolm X and he says by any means, mm-hmm. and that's the motto of the the fanatics on on both sides. By by any means, You're like can can we riot? Yes. Can we pull down the statues? Yes. Can can we do bodily harm? Can I take away right. liberties of other people? Can I censor these people? And they all say yes. Yeah. We, they say yes because they think that the ideas that that are in conflict with the echo chambers of their own ideas don't even deserve to be heard. Right, yeah. And that's dangerous. Yeah, that is really dangerous. If you can't allow for dissent, then it only goes in one direction, right? Yeah. Like the true lesson from uh, from South America isn't that this man spent ye- decades in prison and then became president. I mean, sure, that's a great story. It's a great story. This, the lesson from that is that Mandela came out and when people tried to get violent, he said no. He goes, South Africa. This is yeah. South Africa. Yeah, yeah, sorry. This isn't about retribution. This is about healing our community, right? You have to have the, You have to be magnanimous in in victory. Yeah. In any case, it well, is. But that like, looked really good for a few years. I'm not sure when the last time we were in South Africa. was. No, he's dead now. Yeah. Yeah. And his family's basically fucked off out of there too. To be <laughs> honest, like there's, no, there's, should, there's nothing left for I anybody loved in South, South Africa, Africa ten yeah. years ago. Now I'm like, I just want to go with a rifle. Yeah. It's, it's is it that now. bad? Oh, yeah. You land in Jayburg, and like, if you don't have a gun, and you go outside of protected security guard areas, you're dead. No shit. Yeah. Man. If you're a white farmer in anywhere... Like, yeah, they're coming for that land. They're coming for you. I mean, shit. Where was it in uh, Northeast Africa? They actually just paid... Uh, uh, month, they paid a bunch of the white farmers who had their land stolen back in the day. Yeah. Like $3 R- billion. Reverse dollars, reparations. Three and a half billion dollars yeah. or some shit, right? Yeah. <sighs> not going to happen. Can we just all get along? No, no, we can't. All right, cool. We then can't. be good at war. I'm pretty, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sp- exactly. Speaking, speaking of which, what, what's the worst part of the world you've seen right now? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a dig for that one. There's just a lot. There's a big. There's a I'm big always g- curious because I don't get to see this. I always shit. think Haiti is the worst place in the world. I don't think you can it's get any worse bad. than that. I think Haiti is probably the worst place in the world because there's no hope for it ever getting better. What about Somalia? Yeah, so yeah, like, that's probably the same. Yeah, yeah Somalia. Yeah. Uh, but. What what I like, so I'm going to these places like Niger, Burkina Faso, Mauritania, and um, re- Reno often. And I'm actually seeing, like the Titanic, as we are adding more stability and security into these regions where they're headed directly for an iceberg where everybody's going to drown and freeze to death and, and, and live. And the, die. Yeah, yeah, the short 
duration of their lives in agony. Um, those countries are like shifting towards democracies and capitalism and constitutions and you know like women are driving and i'm like how you guys built a building there yeah like that used to be literally a dump and you only put human excrement excrement there but now there's you built some that's a school <laughs> you know and in two years so um it's really cool to see north africa um mm. having changes like that and uh, Northeast Africa still breaks my heart. Yeah, and Eritrea, Ethiopia, Somalia, all that shit's fucked, man. That civil war is... Egypt. Is, I don't know if any... I mean, Egypt is Egypt's what it is, right? kind of... Yeah. Egypt's on the border. Egypt, Egypt is like, what Like, on the borders, they're, they're kind of the fucking, yeah. like... I mean, they're still <laughs> they've got a bunch of ISIS in Northeast Egypt that are helping fucking the Palestinians get shit in through the blockade and stuff, so there's problems up there. There's always going to be problems in Egypt, right, because it's corrupt as fuck. Yeah. But it's not nearly as bad. You see the as... Taliban post with all their new toys the other day? No, I missed it. Oh. They Did they get have... their Christmas presents already? No, they've got, like, nice body armor and oh. helmets, and they had a fucking Where are they grenade launchers. From? Russia. Who Is knows? that our biggest threat? You've been everywhere. Yeah, I mean, so we've, we've been fighting Russia for 40 years. Yeah. And, China um, economically is our biggest threat. Yeah. If um, the, the ideas of communism, period, mm. both yeah, from yeah, for sure. China and Russia and the proxy wars that we have with them. So they're, they're like two peas in a pod, even though they, they have no alignments strategically and they both want their own objectives to be the world superpower. Um, both of them fighting us concurrently is where we are. And so if we're fighting Russia, we're also fighting China. Mm -hmm. And if we're fighting China, we're also fighting Russia. But we're not fighting them directly. It's via proxy mm -hmm. of whatever country we're in. And that sucks. We've been in a new Cold War ever since 2003. Ever since we invaded Iraq and Russia started sending weapons into Iraq through Iran. Teaching. We've been in a new, uh, we've been in a new Cold EFPs. War. EFPs. Yeah, EFPs, RPG-29s, all that shit came from there. All the NVGs that they had at the beginning of the war, all of it came from Russia. Dude, right? I see rad NVGs in Africa. Yeah, I'm serious. Just steal those shit like, to bring them back home. Like, like there's no serial number on this. How is did mine, you bitch. Get these? <laughs> Where did? Just tell me who gave these to you. Like 15th generation. Yeah. Nods. Like I ordered them off <laughs> <laughs> cheaper than dirt. <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Christmas Tim, shopping. Every Man. time you're on the show, it's uh, it's, it's, it's a banger. It's enlightening. Yeah. It's enlightening. Fun times. This is the point of the show where we get to the drinking bro of the week, which is okay. someone who has inspired you or helped you become the person you are today. I, who is that guy for you? Me. Ooh, it's man. me. It's totally me. Jared's a not a very good example. Or a, of this. Or a lady. <laughs> yeah. Could be a lady. It's called a callback, bitch. <laughs> um, we we just had Gothic Serpent happen, mm -hmm. and um, when I enlisted, Shugart and Gordon were my idols, um, and I have put myself in that helicopter. I mean, I've been in that position where I'm over and I'm looking down, and countless times have i been like if this goes one way we're in a shoe garden gordon moment if yep. it goes another way it's like america rules and you get stability and security and thank god it's always gone this way but i ask myself all the time would i be prepared would i be trained to be able to make that decision because you don't rise to the occasion right you only you only raise to the level of your training right and those guys were the most incredibly trained men on the planet and when they watched their teammates on the ground that were all about to get bludgeoned to death by a bunch of savages they said sir put us on the ground we're going to go fight for these guys um so shugart and gordon are the that is the goal that is the standard that is the the, the accountability that i hold myself to and the question i ask myself every morning when i get up what would i do am i would, am i capable of making that decision. Yeah. And even if I was capable of making that decision and I was able to get to that helicopter, could I be able to do what they did to save life? I mean, at least, uh, at least Durant's life, right? Yeah. At least his, like just one. There's, and you, you gotta forget about the movies and all that bullshit. Put yourself in that position and think about, uh, was there any doubt and at any time in either one of their minds that they were going to die that day? I don't think no, so. Not a, I don't, cause I've, We've all been in situations somewhere like, like, oh, fuck, this is fucked up, right? Yeah. And you just have to accept that shit and move let's on. Let's get some cover and let's fucking yeah. start shooting that, back. They, they had that no one, cover? That oh, was, yeah, an, like that was cover. actual. That was actually yeah. an, an even more extreme situation. Like, like there was no question. There 400 was, dudes running towards yeah. what I see to be a he pilot that M is moving. The shooter yeah. had an M14 with an aim point on it. Yeah. yeah. And a fucking Dude, uh, that guy's so gangster. <laughs> and a fucking M92 Beretta. M92 Beretta where the safety that is probably such didn't a work. Gangster yeah. setup too. Yeah. It was a Woodstock M14 too. Yeah. 
It's pretty dope. Frog. That's hilarious. Yeah, those guys are real American heroes, man. La- one more question before I get out of here. Uh, because we're on the road traveling, interviewing celebrities everywhere, uh, partying with Kid Rock a few weeks ago and all that shit at his house, uh, interviewing him for the show and everything else. My wife always gives me shit. Yeah. But I'm only gone for a couple days. How does your wife deal with your schedule? Because you guys have been married for a very long time at this point. Yeah. Um, is that difficult? Because <laughs> I take heat from my wife, where she's like, "Oh, you're gonna you're gonna go party with Kid Rock and John Daly. Have fun." Yeah. Actually, your, for, kids, your kids miss you. For his anniversary uh, two years ago, she made a, a highlight reel of me and him hanging out. That's all, dead all, serious. All, all, all over the world. Fall, yes, yeah. That's serious. She's <laughs> for like, happy yeah. for my anniversary. Yeah. And her, she goes, "Happy anniversary <laughs> to your your real partner." And it was yeah. just it was yeah. it was Very pictures of, it was pictures and videos of us at like. NFL games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yikes. How does she deal with it? Um, not. I mean, she's amazing. She. 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 I, as we look at you know, these these Air Force Tac Ps mm. that are heroes and doing incredible things, um, it's not just them, right? The family unit of of their their partners and their parents, their brothers and sisters that make sacrifices for them to to do this very very difficult career. Um, you know, those wives are. They are they are cut above. Mm-hmm. You know she she's running seven companies when I'm gone. Um, you know like I I leave what what is revenue drops ninety mm. percent. Yeah, and um, you know we still have to pay bills, but I'm making a salary of an E eight when I'm when I'm wearing a uniform, and uh, so that's she uh, she she. Uh, next question. Yeah, this, you know, that's I, a good but lesson. Looking, but looking at his Instagram. That's, that's the first thought I, I had where I was just yeah. like, man, how does your wife, kids, and all that stuff, like when you're gone, deal yeah. with it? Cause I mean, it's, 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 it's difficult hard. enough in it's hard. a business like this, add the military on top of it. So if you're a private out there and you're thinking about marrying that stripper, skip it. Skip yeah. it. Skip it. <laughs> Find a skip, woman skip that it. can deal with all that bullshit yeah. so you don't end up 25 years old yeah. with two kids and a divorce. She's an MBA undergrad in finance yeah. and accounting, you know, mm-hmm. she, like CFO of companies, so like – I got a I got a gangster partner, mm. but um, you know the the hardest part, you know, I come home broken, just like everybody, you know, like busted up, bloody g- g- gear smells like donkey piss and shit and my friend's blood, and um, you know she she not only has been running stuff but then gets me right, so. Love you. Well, look, man, uh, yeah. we love every time you're on here. Uh, if you're not following Tim Kennedy, Tim, please tell everyone where they can find you. You're one of the most fascinating people because it's hard to describe what it is you do every yeah. single day. And it's your life story seems unbelievable. Looking forward to the book coming out. Where do you find Tim Kennedy online? Uh, Tim Kennedy MMA for like all the social media stuff. But remember, it's just social media. So relax a smidge. Um, <laughs> Sheepdog Response is, is the company where um, if you, if you want to hang out and shoot with me, I'm there. But uh, like, Everything else is just, I try to hang out with uh, barrel-chested, freedom-fighting, freedom-loving Americans. Awesome. And then one guy with a ball on his hat. Just, just yeah. one guy. Just one. Yeah. You got to have one, at yeah, least. Got one, one friend who tells you yeah. you look nice, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, we appreciate you being here, Tim. For Jared Taylor, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, Tim Kennedy, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.